The Morning Raga. The novel by Ellis Peters, adapted for radio by Betty Davis, with Elizabeth Proud, Carlton Hobbs, Harry Taub, Patricia Gallimore and Sean Barrett. Tossa, aren't you packed yet? Well, you're early, Dominic. You said you'd pick me up at nine and it's only half past eight. It's a long drive to Camelford and Mother's expecting us for lunch. Oh, we'll get there. I am ready anyway. There. All packed. Uh... I... I ought to ring Mother. Look, do it when we get there. Now, last time we were going to stay with my people, my future mother-in-law scuffered it at the last minute. Hmm? She won't this Christmas. She's far too busy filming. When she's on a film, she doesn't even remember she's got a daughter. You were saying? It may not be her. Want to bet? Hello? Yes, Tossa Barber speaking. Hello, Mother. How's the shooting going? Watch it. Please watch it. Yes, well, darling, you know we were going to Dom's people. Were going? Yes, I remember you said she had. But, Mother, what can I... Where? We are going to my people for Christmas. You said so, remember? Would she really? For both of us? Of course I do realise it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance, but... Well, I'd love to, and I bet he would, too. Oh, look. Look, let me talk to him and call you back. Yes, you do that. Get her off that line and give me a chance to talk some sense into you. Quarter of an hour, Mother. Yes, I promise. Bye. Now, look, we were going to my parents in Camerford. I mean, we are going. Of course, if you say so when you know. If they say so, then we go. I wouldn't ditch them for anybody in the world, but what would you have said? Well, how do I know till you tell me what you're talking about? She wants us to take a little girl to India. India? Are you sure she said India? She said it twice. She said Delhi, too. All expenses paid? Mm. Money's no object. Well, whose money? Dorette Lester's. Who's Dorette Lester? She's the American actress they brought over to co-star in this film of Mother's. And the little girl? Dorette's. How old? Fourteen. Mother wants us to drive down to Bath and hear all about it. Well, I suppose we could do that much anyway, couldn't we? Darling, couldn't we? Oh, there has to be a catch in it. It'd have to be a big one to tip the scales much, wouldn't it? Your father's Indian, you say? Hmm. Well, the way I see it, Dorette wasn't much when she married him, and he was terribly rich and a super catch. He was a graduate of the University of Punjab, doing postgraduate work in the States. Well, anyway, she married him, and they had this little girl. Then? Dorette became a star. She was all tied up with her career, and he was all tied up with his. Maybe they were too far apart ever to make a go of it. Anyway, she divorced him years ago, and he went back to India. And the little girl's now about to be shipped off to him. Oh, that's the way it looks. Maybe just for a visit. Dorette's getting married again. Perhaps he doesn't want a ready-made daughter. I don't suppose she's ever asked him. Or asked the kid how she feels. Well, we can always back out of it if we don't like the look of it. We'll have to meet Dorette, won't we? I've committed us to that. Yes. Yes, we'll have to. Oh, well, let's wait and see. <laughs> then you see, Tarsa. May I call you Tarsa? I feel I know you already. Your mother's talked so much about you. Oh, please. Then his family made it impossible. Such a van was the new India in person. Sophisticated, educated, and rich in his own right. The family were rupee millionaires even before him. An old family, too, and these Punjabis can be very proud. So I was the undesirable one, you see. Were they upset about the marriage, then? His mother was broken-hearted. She'd been widowed two years, and Satchavan was the only child, and, of course, sons, Hindu sons. And, and he didn't even try to get custody of Anjali? He did try. He tried very hard. But at that time, we were so bitter, both of us. And I fought just as hard. They gave her to me. I see. You mustn't think I haven't thought about this for a long time and, and gone through agony. All these years, ever since she was six years old, I've had the joy of her. And he, my poor... 
Poor Satchavan. Yes, he must have missed her a great deal. But there's a time to give up what one wants and needs. A time to remember not other people's wants and needs, but theirs, the children's. She knows nothing of the world he can offer her, and she has a right to know everything before she makes a choice. Okay, let's have a front I want to be honest with her. I Any want her to go to her father. Any time, Dory. Coming, Lenny. Give us three minutes more, huh? Okay, My husband's expecting his daughter. I wrote to him a month before I left the States to tell him she'd be coming. I'll give you his address in Delhi and his mother's, just in case of any contretemps. Contretemps? Is there likely to Oh, be... no, there'll be no difficulty. And, of course, all expenses will be my concern. No need to hurry back. You must see something of India while you're there. When is Anjali expected to arrive in London? The day after tomorrow. If you come with me to meet her at London Airport, we could have an evening together, and I could arrange your flight for the next day. Hmm? Oh, and uh, one more thing. Yes? I have an old good friend who's filming over there, quite near to Delhi. I want him to meet your plane and take care of you. If you need anything, you can call on him. Ernest Felder. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me. Thank you. But the journey itself is just too much for a child alone, and we're so pressed behind schedule. It's, it's quite impossible for me. The task say you will take my little girl for me, won't you? Now, Red, you ready there? Yes, Lenny, right with you. Tassa, dear... Yes, Miss Lester. Oh. Yes, of course we'll take her. Darling, I'm so grateful. My mind's at rest now. I'll telephone you the details. I have that number, haven't I? Ah, oh, oh, yes. Uh, we'll meet at Heathrow the day after tomorrow. Coming, Lenny, coming! Uh, of course, for all we know, the father may be no better. But at least he has to have his chance. Yes. I still don't see what the catch is. There has to be one somewhere. She is. Honey! Honey, over here! Oh, hi! Hi, Mommy. How have you been? Oh, honey, how lovely to see you. <clears throat> Gee, what a flight. I'm about dead on my feet. Oh, darling. My, that outfit's keen, Mommy. You know that? It's just a dream. I like it. Uh, honey, this is Tassa, Tassa Barber. She's flying with you to Delhi. Hi, Tassa. And, and Dominic Fells, he's coming too. He's a friend of Tassa's. A friend of us all. Why, sure. I just hope I get in on the act, too. Hello, Dominic. <laughs> Hello. Gee, I'm lucky being so well looked after. I sure appreciate it. I really do. Now, honey, we've got this car waiting Mommy, so... Mommy, you know, I feel kind of squalid. I just must get to the restroom and clean up. Oh, I'll come with you. Back in a moment, Tata. This way, honey. Just that that airplane would go up. Well? So this is the poor little girl? She's very pretty. Ooh, a bit of your Lolita, certainly. All that red leather and fun fur. But you know, she's not that sophisticated. Maybe not. Nonetheless, I think we may have found the snag. Mm -hmm. Gee, doesn't it all look dry? All dry and brown. I was here once before, you know, but I can't remember much about it now. It's so long ago. How old were you? Just about five. I used to know a little Hindi, too, but I've forgotten it all now. Do you remember your grandmother? No, not at all. I think Father did take me to see her, though. Do you think she'll be glad to have me? She's old, and she hated it when he married Mommy. But you're not Dorette. You're you. Partly her son, too. You're her only grandchild. She'll be glad, all right. I hope so. Oh, look, Dally! Isn't it pretty? It sure is pretty. Hi, Dominic, wake up! Will you fasten your seat belts, please, and extinguish all cigarettes? We should be landing at Delhi Airport in about two minutes' time. Gee, isn't it different? It certainly is different. All these people... Mr. Fels? Uh, yes? Oh, and you must be... Uh... Ernest Felder, right. Ah. Dory wired me to look out for you. Well, nice of you to come. Miss Barber, you're very welcome in India. Thank you. And you must be Dory's little girl. Yes. Well, well. 
You know, I haven't seen you since you were knee-high to a kitten. How'd you do, Mr. Felder? It's sure nice to have somebody here who belongs. Girlie, you're going to have no trouble at all that way. Not while my bunch are just outside town. I've got the boys outside with the truck. You don't have to do a thing, but just hand over to us, and we do everything. It's very kind of you, but uh, oughtn't we to contact Mr. Kumar first? Tell him his daughter's arrived? So you ought, my dear, so you ought. But listen, before you go to him, you've got to have a roof over your heads. So that you don't owe to him. I'm friends right there beside you. So as you can just say, look, here I am. Am I welcome? And if not... Yes, if not. Well, all right then. That's that. Goodbye. I'm sorry you've been troubled and no hard feelings. We've got places of our own to go to and feet of our own to stand on. Right? Right. So, I reckon tomorrow morning will be time enough for Mr. Kumar. Mornings are the time for starting enterprises. Listen, I've booked you all in at Keene's Hotel. It's south of town, but it's cheaper than most and just as good. And I reckon you might want to stay around for a while. It's a shame to waste that air fare. Sound okay? Sounds wonderful. It's terribly good of you. Okay, come on, then. Let's pick up that luggage. Now, this will be a lightning tour of Delhi, especially for you. Because we've got to go to Connaught Circus to pick up one of the gang, and then we're bound due south for the edge of the town where we're filming. Hey, we'll have to step on him. Ash Oak will be there by now. We're a mite late. This is Connaught Place, the outer range where we're going. Connaught Circus. Well, that's the film company's office. Temporary headquarters. Now, down south, near Morali, we've got the two villas for living quarters. But we'll only be there a day or two more, and then we're headed for Benares to do the deer park scenes at Sarna, right where they happen. What's the film you're making? Didn't Dory tell you? It's an epic about the life of the Buddha. You know, time was when it would have been called World Farewell or some such title. But nowadays, we do these things straight and simply call it the Buddha. Well, that's what the producer wants anyway. But Ganesh Rao, my co-director, says the accent is on the man, and it ought to be called Siddhartha. So my guess is, that's what it'll be called in the end. I've heard of the Buddha, but I don't really know the story. Could you tell it to me? Oh, Ashok is the man you want. He'll tell you everything you want to know. Hey, there he is, right outside the office, waiting for us. Meet Ashok Kabir, our musical director. Welcome to Delhi. Hey, you ask him nicely, Anjali, and he'll play you some of his music for Siddhartha presently, when we get him warmed up. Ashok... The little lady wants you to tell her all about this film of ours. I will be very happy. Now, down John Path, fast as you like, Tom. Then round the back of the Lodi Park, the Keens, and we'll drop the bags and sign in. And then we make straight for Morali, Unsley, and Ashok can tell you all about the film. So, Prince Siddhartha was born to the King Sudodhana and his Queen Maya. The wise men told the king that his son would be a very great leader, but they could not tell what kind. They said if ever the prince were allowed to set eyes on an old man, a sick man, a dead man, and a holy monk, then he would be the lord of a very great kingdom, but not of this world. The king wanted his son to be an earthly ruler like him, so he brought up Siddhartha in a kind of beautiful prison and kept from him all sickness and ugliness and pain. And when he grew up, they married him to the most beautiful of all the noble women of the world. Thank you, darling. The sweet Yashodara, with whom he was already in love and she with him. Naturally. Uh, Kamala, you have met Anjali. She is playing Yashodara. Yes, I know. Tell what happened next. The prince grew tired of his pleasure gardens and palaces and wanted to go into the city of Kabalavastu. When he couldn't dissuade him, the king gave orders that everyone who was sick or ugly or old should be kept out of the way. All the same, when the prince drove through the town, he came on something he didn't know existed. A miserable relic of a man at the end of his lifespan. Old age in person. At your service. Govind Das is playing old age and death. But he's young. <laughs> but it is a very good makeup. <laughs> Siddhartha asked what this creature could be. Was it a man at all? And Channa, his faithful charioteer, had to tell him that this was the common lot of all men that someday the prince himself would be as this old man. And that's the scene they've been shooting in Maroli this afternoon. Well, it's only a village, but it's nearer to Kaplavasta than anything we could fake up in the city. And tomorrow we're going to finish the other two scenes there. The meetings with disease and death. So he did go again? Twice. And he saw what really happens to men. Yashodara had a son, but it was too late to deflect her husband, however much he loved them both. So he named the child Rahul. That means a fetter. Because the child bound him like a chain. And he rode out once more and met a monk who had forsaken the world for solitude to find peace. And he left Yashodara? 
he brooded on the need for peace, for freedom from the wheel of recurrent suffering, not for himself, but for all men. And then, one night, when all the court were asleep, he got up and looked at his wife and child and went out from them silently in search of the way. All the guards were asleep, and all the gates opened of themselves to let Siddhartha go free. Play some of the music. Let Anjali hear the theme of the departing. Do you know what a raga is, Anjali? No. They are the basic material for all our classical music. There are thousands of them, each for a special time and season and a special mood. Show her, Ashok. <laughs> Oh, yes. They have names. This is Raga Hiyabhaev. It is a mourning Raga. And it has a special purpose. Special mood, Kamala said. It is to be played in the early hours of the morning, when the guests are departing. Uh, talking of departing guests. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's time we got you back the keys. Oh. Uh, where's this place you got to go tomorrow morning? Uh, Rabindranagar. Uh, that's one of the newest suburbs that are spreading out westwards. I come with you, but we want to finish the Morali shots tomorrow. And if we make it, we're off by air to Benares next morning to do the deer park scenes. Look, just in case you need help, give me a ring in the evening. Well, we're here. I'll ring. What's that old man, do you think, over there in the garden, sitting by the fire? Perhaps he's some sort of a holy man. Anyone coming? Yes. I think I can hear someone. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're looking for the house of Satyavan Kumar. This is house of Mr. Kumar, but... Uh... Oh, uh, may we speak with Mr. Kumar? He'll be expecting us. He's received a letter to tell him that we're coming. There is a letter. Yes, the letter is here. I bring it. Uh, no, but if we could speak to Mr. Kumar, we can explain everything ourselves. I am sorry. Mr. Kumar not here. No one can take letter to him. No one know where can find him. What? More than one year ago in the night, Mr. Kumar, he go away. Never say one word, never come back. You mean he simply went away without letting anyone know where he was going? Or when to expect him back? Not even his mother? Ha, Sahib, in the night. He did not sleep in his bed. He did not take any luggage. Everything left in place. He go, that is all. Like the Lord Buddha, when it was time to depart. Your father was a devout Hindu, by all reports. So was the Lord Buddha. Father, this is Miss Anjuli Kumar, Mr. Kumar's daughter. Oh, Mrs. Saab, I not know anything. I not know when Shri Satyavan go away. When his servants send word to the big house that he gone, my mistress, she send them all away and tell me, go, keep this place until Shri Satyavan return. Your mistress? Ha, Mian Saab, Shri Mati Purnima Kumar, Shri Satyavan's mother, I her houseboy. And there's nobody here now who was here on the night Mr. Kumar went away? No, sir. Only Arjun Baba. Who is Arjun Baba? Oh, the old man, the beggar. Sri Satyaman took him in and let him live in this compound. Oh, the old man over there? Yes, that is Arjun Baba. He comes and goes as he will. He eats from our table. Now Sri Satyaman is gone. Sri Mati Purnima feeds him. This is his home until he die. But he was here then. He may have seen something. Ma'am, sir. Arjun Baba is blind. But what shall we do? Please, if you are willing, I think it's good. You should go to my mistress' house. She very ill. Ever since Shri Satyavan go from here, she falls sick for him. But there is Shri Vasudev, Shri Satyavan's cousin. He's manager for family business now. Please, you speak with him. Uh, yes, thank you, we will. Uh, we have Mrs. Kumar's address. Uh, we'll go there. Uh, come on, Anjali. Saab. Uh... Wait a moment. You are not from Delhi. No, Mrs. Saab. I come from a village near Kangla. Shrimati Purnima come from there and has a house there. My father is her gardener. What is your name? Kishan Singh. 
We shall meet again, Kishan Singh. I am glad you are here to keep my father's house so faithfully and look after Urchin Baba. If you have any news of my father, send it to me at Keen's Hotel. Yes, Mrs. Saab. Now we must go to my grandmother. What is it, Anjali? Wait a moment. I want to speak to him, the old man. But the boy said There's that There's he... nothing wrong with his hearing. I saw. He heard us come. We can try. But it's odds on he doesn't speak English. Kishan Singh did. Well, all right. No, let me try. Alone. Namaste. Yeah. Uncle, I am Satyavan's daughter. I have come to find my father. Help me. Uncle, you were here. No one but you when my father went away in the night. If he had a secret, he would not have kept it from me. I am going to my grandmother now. If you know anything, I beg you to tell me. Come away. You won't get anything out of him. Uncle, I am Anjali, his daughter. If you have anything to tell me, send Kishan Singh to Keen's Hotel to ask for me. You understand? Here. This is for you. Think of me and send me word. Namaste. Anjali. Coming. What did you give him? My good luck piece. That gold dollar I wear is a pendant. I think he can help. If only he will. Now we better get a taxi and see my grandmother. I don't want to live here. You needn't stay if you don't want to. We can always take you back with us. But if your grandmother's ill, we must at least inquire. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, is Mr. Vasudev Kumar in, please? Come, please. I will say. Stop. It's so dark. And so... Rich? Yes, and lonely. You wish to see me? Uh, Mr. Vasudev Kumar? I am Vasudev Kumar. But this is very inconvenient time. Oh, I can see it is. I'm sorry. Uh, we've just come from your cousin's home. Uh, my name is Phelps. This is Miss Baba. Uh, my aunt is ill, I'm afraid. Uh, we realize Mrs. Kumar is ill, and we certainly don't want to increase your anxieties. But this is Anjali Kumar, your cousin Satyavan's daughter. Daughter? At her mother's request, we brought her to join her father, but now we find he isn't in Delhi and hasn't received her letter. Well, it seemed the obvious thing to bring her to her grandmother. In any case, her mother asked us to do that if there were any difficulty. I'm very sorry we've turned up at such a distressing time. Is my grandmother very ill? She has had two strokes since my cousin went away without a word. And yesterday, I'm sorry to say, she had a third one. Oh, I'm so sorry. But, well, in the circumstances, I think we'd better leave and get in touch with you later. When we hope Mrs. Kumar will be better. It's useless. You haven't understood. Mrs. Kumar is barely conscious. The doctors say she is dying. Then I must see her. But... Whether I stay here or go back to America, I must see her. I am her granddaughter. And I have a right to see her. And she has a right to see me. Very well. Come this way. The servants are with her. Anjali, do you really think... Leave her alone. May I go to her? Yes. Namaste, Grandmother Purnima. Grandmother, I am Anjali, your son's daughter. I have come home. Uh, uh, uh. 
Anjali. Anjali, come away now. It's finished. Leave her to them. We'd better go. So what do we do now? We can't possibly leave her in India with cousin Vasudev. Hmm. I mean, if Satyavan inherits everything, then even supposing he never turns up, someday they'll have to presume his death. Then if there's no Anjali, Vasudev's next in line to the family fortune. Aren't you being a bit melodramatic? Maybe. He doesn't look like the wicked uncle type. No, he doesn't. If with all these millions of people around, it would be awfully easy for one little one, a stranger, to get lost without trace. Exactly. Your step when you go for your bath tosser. We've been invaded. What? Two huge cockroaches. I suppose they came up the plumbing. Oh, that's nothing. A gecko fell on me this morning in bed. I know. I heard you squeal. <laughs> I'd rather have geckos than cockroaches. Anything with four legs is my brother. Over four, and they are out. What about snakes? Oh, things with no legs are out too, but not as way out as things with eight. <laughs> uh, who was that on the phone? Cousin Vasudev? Uh, no, uh, I called Mr. Felder, but he wasn't back from filming yet. So I told the whole story to Ashok. Ashok? I missed Ashok. Well, you were in your bath. Oh. Anyway, he's going to tell Mr. Felder everything and he'll call back. Oh, right on cue. Hello? Y yes, speaking. Uh, yes, it's a bit of a facer, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, of course. How very simple you make it sound. Well, that's what we'll do. Uh, okay, and thanks again. Oh, what's the Benares number? Hmm? Good. I uh, hope everything will go right with the shooting. Yes, bye. What did he say? What's so simple? He says, with Mrs. Kumar's death, plastered all over the evening press, and you can bet it'll be in the dailies tomorrow, Sachavan will be certain to see it and come straight home. No son will ever let anyone else run his mother's funeral. All we've got to do is to sit back and wait. Oh, yeah. He's right, of course. And while we're waiting, we can be proper tourists and have a look at Delhi. Jantar Mantar Park. Gee, it looks so modern. Like Guggenheim or something. Well, it says here it's 250 years old. I can see what Anjali means. It's sort of like the shape of things to come. Stairs everywhere. Stairways <laughs> to the stars. Huh? That's kind of corny for you, isn't it? No, that is exactly what they are. Now, this is a giant observatory. Oh. There are five of them round India. Don't sound so well informed. Anyone can be superior if they've got the guidebook. <laughs> Built by the Maharaja Jai Singh II of Jaipur, the town planner and astronomer in the early 18th century. Oh, those beautiful staircases. You know, I'd like to climb up and up, and then you'd get to the moon like the Apollo men. I know you would if you went right to the top. Oh, don't you try it. The handrail's only knee high. Well, if we're going to do any shopping, it's time we moved or they'll all be shut. Uh, we'll look at the market tomorrow. Everything's yelling at you at the top of its voice. Traffic, people, a lot. The shops are kind of cool and dark, though, and fun. Kashmiri shawls and jewellery and spices all muddled up. I'd like to get lost here. Oh, don't you dare. Look, I've got you by the present, huh? Oh, oh, jasmine buds, how pretty. You can uh, look them into a bracelet, see, with this green silk cord. Well, they won't last very long, but... They're rather charming. You keep them for us till we get back to the hotel. Yes, I think you'd better. They might get a bit knocked about if we wore them in this crowd. It's time we were getting back anyway. I wonder if there'll be a message. Well, if there isn't, I'm going to ring Vasudev. The funeral was today. Well, that's that. The funeral's over, and no word from Sachavan. Perhaps he hasn't seen the papers. He can't have seen them or he'd be here. What do we do now? We could hang on a bit. A fortnight, perhaps. But if he's been missing a year... And if we do stay on a fortnight, we'll use up all our money and have nothing left for a single ticket back to London for Anjali. What? You... You want me to go back to England with you? Well, we can't deliver you to your father or even your grandmother. The only legal guardian you have is your mother, for the time being, anyway. Well, I don't see what else we can do. We'll see about your ticket tomorrow morning. All right. You're the boss. Now, if you folks don't mind, I'm going to put our bathroom light on and alert the cockroaches to get right out of there. And in about five minutes, I'm going to have my bath. Mrs. 
Missy Sahab, a messenger, he bring this for you. Say, please, give privately. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Missy Sahab. My good luck piece. Daughter, come morning before light alone. Boy! Missy! Who brought this note? A messenger, Missy Sahab. Um, perhaps a porter in a red headcloth. How long ago? Only this minute. He may be still in courtyard only. You see from window. There, Missy. Red headcloth. You see? Oh, just his back. Too late to catch him. Do you hear that? Listen. Someone's singing. Did you get it? I heard someone singing. What about it? Didn't you get what it was? I heard it the other day and so did you. It's from the film, the Raga Ashok played us. Don't you remember? But the film's not been made yet. I don't know that it's so extraordinary. After all, the ragas are everyone's property. You just take them and improvise on them, don't you? I mean, the unit's in Benares now, not Delhi. Couldn't be connected with the film. Hmm. No, I suppose not. Well, we'd better go in now. It's getting cold. Here, Missy? Yes, oh, thank you. How much? Two rupees. Here you are. Thank you, Missy. Arjun Baba, how oh, there you are. Namaste. Uh, uncle, I am Anjali Kumar. You called me. I have come. Namaste. You had something to tell me. Yes. Yes, I tell. But you can see. You're not blind. You're not Arjun Baba. Just a second. Who is it? John, are you awake? It's me, Foster. Oh, it's coming. You haven't seen anything of Anjali, have you? Anjali? No, I've only just woken up. She's gone. Gone? I woke up a little while ago and she's nowhere to be seen and her bed's cold. But what on earth? You know what I think? When it came to the point, she simply didn't want to go back home. I thought last night she was being too quiet and reasonable. But she wouldn't run off on her own just to give us the slip. No, I think she'll turn up. Anyway, before we do anything, we'll have a word with them downstairs. Uh, Miss Kumar, no, I have not seen her this morning, but there was a note delivered for her late last night. A note? Did she get it? Of course, sir. I sent it up to her as soon as it came, by the room boy. Uh, who brought it? A common peon. A, a shop porter, perhaps. Though I recall, the note was not in an envelope, but just a sheet of paper folded together. A little soiled, even. About what time was this? Oh, I, I, I cannot say precisely, sir, but a little after nine, probably. That was when she had her bath. And when we heard the singing. That can't have anything to do with it. No. No, I'm imagining things. Well, we'd better go and see Vasudev. Not... No, indeed, I assure you, I sent my little cousin no note. I would not dream of addressing her except through you, when you were being placed in charge of her by her mother. Indeed, I intended to telephone you today and ask you to call. Some proper provision must be made for Anjali. Well, we've got to find her first. You do not think someone has lured her away? Oh, that would be terrible, but who knew of her presence here? The film unit? But they're in Benares. The only place where we're known, apart from here in the hotel, is in the house in Rabindranagar, your cousin Satyavan's house. Of course. Kishan Singh, a, a slightly grubby little note by a paid messenger. Well, Kishan Singh may have had some news of Anjali's father. Well, perhaps he's home. Oh, but he would have telephoned here, surely. Still, I think perhaps I will get the car and we will drive over there. If you are right, that would resolve all our problems most fortunately. Thank <laughs> you. 
This crowd, oh no, oh please, God, no. Oh dear, something has happened. Something is wrong. Hurry. Uh, Miss Baba, you should perhaps stay in the car. No, I couldn't. Sahib, name Sahib, please. There is very bad thing happened here. Please, you tell these policemen. I am honest. I have done nothing wrong. Oh, why should I call police? Uh, Kishan Singh is the caretaker of this house and has been a good servant of Srimati Purnima Kumar. Uh, Mr. Kumar here, her nephew, will tell you the same. He is to be trusted. I understand this boy is the only resident here. Is that the case? Yes, that is true. Uh, apart from the old man who lives in the compound, Arjun Baba. Ah, yes, that is the point. We are unfortunately debarred from referring to this elderly gentleman as a witness. Well, I know he's blind. You mean there's been a crime on these premises? A very serious crime. What? What have you got there? The lady should not look. Sir, you see... Oh. Arjun Baba. He was strangled last night. And this boy... I did not touch the old man. Why should I? All this year I've given him food and been as his servant, as my mistress told me. Always when I got up in the morning, he was sitting by his brazier. Today he was not there, so I looked within. Yes. He was lying there in dark. He was dead. I saw how he died, so I went for the police. Should I do that if I had killed him? It would be the best way to avoid suspicion if you had the wit. But why should I wish to harm him? For what gain? It would be easy to make away with some of the furnishings of this house without a witness always in the compound. The old man was blind. But quick of hearing, I understand. This boy has always been a very trustworthy servant. I cannot believe he would hurt the old man. You do not know what he might do, being master here as well as servant. And who else would want to kill such an old man? Who were Arjun Baba's enemies? He had no enemies. No friends now except me. I do not know who should do such a thing. But I did not. I did not. Excuse me, but have your men examined all Arjun Baba's belongings? Of course. Uh, may, may I know what you found? Sahib, such a man has nothing. A brazier, a headcloth, a loincloth, a blanket... And oh, but a... you see, he hasn't got a blanket. And it was a cold night. That is true. There was no blanket. They didn't find a gold coin. Where should such a man get gold? But there's something here. Look at this. The bracelet. A bracelet of jasmine flowers trodden into the ground? What has this to do with Arjun Baba? The cord's broken, and it was quite strong. Anjali was here, and she was in a struggle. Perhaps she screamed, and it was muffled by a blanket. Will you explain, please, Sahib? I'll tell you where Arjun Baba got gold. From a young girl who came here with us a few days ago and gave him the dollar she wore on a chain for luck. Well, we came here looking for her. And it looks as if she's been here in the night. And whoever killed Arjun Baba has taken her away. Um, I think we had better go into the house, where it is quieter. I think so, too. This may take some time. So, it would seem that this young lady is the child not merely of one very wealthy person but of two, almost equally subject to envy. If she has been kidnapped, the motive must be gain. Then the question is, how many people here knew Miss Kumar is worth much money as a ransom? The film company? Yes. Most are Indians. They would know the Kumar family are millionaires. The others, the Americans, know the mother is famous and rich. So we have the film company. And who besides? Your household, Mr. Kumar, could hardly be ignorant of the young lady's value. And this houseboy, Kishan Singh. Miss Kumar had expressly revealed her identity to him. After I had already done so. Very naturally. The fact remains, he knew. However, we shall investigate everyone concerned. There remains the possibility that Miss Kumar is at liberty and for her own reasons in hiding. This we can confide to you, Mr. Kumar. An advertisement in the English language press would, I suggest, be a good idea. I shall see to it at once. Uh, there is the evening press, if you will pardon me now. It may not be too late. Uh, if you will excuse me, Mr. Phelps. Uh, of course. Uh, please, do get in touch with me if you have any news. Uh, naturally, I shall do the same. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Your servant, Miss Baba. 
Now, Mr. Feltz, a few more questions. Yes, of course. Have you or has Miss Barber ever previously held any acquaintanceship with any member of the Kumar family? No. We arrived in India only knowing that Anjali had a father and a grandmother. We brought her here to this house a few days ago and were told her father had disappeared. Then we took her to her grandmother's house and found the old lady dying. And it was there you met Mr. Vasudev Kumar? Yes. For the first time? Yes. Well, we didn't even know of his existence before. Now this boy, this Kishan Singh... What about him? You do not realize, Mr. Phelps, that even if some other more subtle mind had conceived the plot of kidnapping Miss Kumar, Kishan Singh would be the obvious tool to use. <laughs> He'd be the last tool I'd use for anything dirty. An innocent face may be a gift from God even to the unworthy. Kishan Singh saw the scene between the young lady and the old man. How easy to send her the symbol and ask her to come here. You think somebody did do that, then? Not Kishan Singh, but... Uh, yes. She came here to see Arjun Baba, and he was killed to get the token from him. That, I think, is all I have to ask you now. You are not leaving Delhi at present. We're not going anywhere until Anjali's found. And I, I hope you're not thinking of detaining Kishan Singh, because he, too, will be available whenever you need him. Moreover, he's certainly innocent. Well, you've only to look at him. Well, he'd never in his life entertained a malicious thought, let alone deliberately hurt anyone. Arjun Baba. Arjun Baba was as sacred to him as the sparrows that fly in and out of the house. The boy was responsible for him to Mrs. Kumar, whom he revered absolutely. And who, you tell me, is dead? Listen. It's gone so quiet outside. What's happened? Well, let's look. Who's that impressive gentleman in the yellow robe talking to Kishan Singh? Uh, and the car? The road. Good morning. I would be grateful if I might speak with you. I think we should go down and speak with the Swami. Come. You must forgive us for an inopportune arrival. We had no idea that we should be intruding upon a problem and a tragedy. My name is Prem Nathanan. I am one of the members of the Native Indian Agricultural Mission. And I came here today to visit the home of my old friend, Satyavan Kumar. Then you did not know. I have been away on field studies. The houseboy here, he is a good boy. I knew him in Mrs. Kumar's household in Kangra. He tells me Mr. Kumar is not here at present. Also that there is a matter of a young girl, his daughter, who has vanished from the care of her guardian. That is true, Swami. This lady and gentleman are the guardians you spoke of. Mr. Feltz and Miss Barber. I had assumed as much. It appears that when Miss Kumar came here a few days ago, she gave a gold coin to Arjun Baba, the old man. Who has been killed? Yes. The coin is missing, as is his blanket. Miss Kumar had asked the old man to send her the coin as a token if he had any information about her father. I see. It would seem that someone who knew this made use of the incident to lure her here so that she might be abducted. Arjun Baba was removed both to get possession of the token and in order that the kidnapper might wait here in his place. That is my conclusion also, Swami. We are agreed that the two crimes are connected. Arjun Baba is dead, but the girl is alive and must be kept alive to be worth money. The kidnapper, too, must make overtures in order to gain. In doing so, he may reveal himself. Exactly, Swami. And therefore, it is clear that we must concentrate on the kidnapping of the girl and we shall thereby find our murderer. You are excellently lucid, Inspector. I am glad so serious a case has fallen into the hands of such an intelligent officer. If there should be any way in which I can help, call upon me. And the boy Kishan Singh may be left in charge of the house. He is a good boy, and I will vouch for him. He will be here whenever you wish to question him. I had no thought of removing him from his trust, Swami. Then I shall leave you to your labors. Miss Baba... Mr. Feltz, I am sorry that you have suffered such a troubled introduction to this country of ours. If you are now returning to Delhi, may I offer you transport? Oh, it's very kind of you. Uh, uh, there is plenty of room, if you do not mind sharing the back of the car with some grain samples we are carrying. Oh. <laughs> and I should like, if you have time, to offer you coffee at the mission. Thank you. We should be very grateful. Good. Come. You thought you heard the morning raga, you say? Yes. Uh, someone was singing it. 
And it would be just about the time the message was delivered to Anjali. Oh, but that's too fanciful. It can't be connected. And you tell me that the film unit is in Benares? Yes. Yes, I suppose the singing meant nothing. And this man, this director... Oh, Mr. Felder? He is, you say, an old friend of the girl's mother. He has her confidence? Yes, I'm sure he has. In the absence of both parents, he might perhaps be the best advisor. We shall certainly tell him what's happened. But you will consider what you ought to do and do it. It is not for me to meddle. If I can be of help, I shall get in touch with you. And if you receive news of the child, I beg you to let me hear it too. We have a telephone. Write down the number and call me whenever you will. Girish, my driver, will take you back to your hotel. What exactly is the Swami Girish? A, a monk or a priest? The Swami is himself. What else can one say? He does not conform to any prescribed order, and he does not recognize caste. He does not do what is expected of him, or even what is required of him. What do you mean? Why? Because he is too busy doing what he wants to do, and what needs to be done. I doubt if any group would dare to claim him, or care to own him. What does this agricultural mission of his do? Whatever it can to improve stock or bring in better methods of farming. We have some foundling farms, too, where the children who are left to fend for themselves by begging can do a small share of the work and get a fair share of the food. Even a seven-year-old is useful for some jobs. Seven? You mean you get them as young as that? Just drifting in on their own? On their own. In our country, too, there are neglected and forsaken children. Yeah. I booked on the afternoon flight from Benari straight after your phone. We haven't finished shooting yet, but this is an emergency. They'll just have to get along without me. Have you told Dorette? Well, no, we haven't. She can't come out here with the film half finished. Even if she did, how could she help? Yeah. Well, we'll have to tell her if Anjali stays missing, of course. But we thought it was better to hold on a bit and tell you instead. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, we won't scare Dorette just yet. Have there been any messages? Messages? Well, it's a snatch for money, that's for sure. They can't get at the father, and you're the nearest available channel to Dorette. Yes, I see what you mean. No, nobody's telephoned. They will. Of course, they might ring this cousin Basil, though. They might reckon he'd pay cash for her if he has legal access to the funds. Hey, uh, do you reckon he'd pay? I'm not sure. Oh, he stands to gain, I see that. But he could be on the level, too. Anyway, whoever took the little girl away knew all about that gold dollar. That's what gets me. And this cousin of hers didn't, you say? Not till today. He could have heard from Kishan Singh. The houseboy would tell a Kumar everything. Yeah, that's true. Maybe a neighbor heard when she gave it to the old man. And all our bunch may know from the time you rang Ashok and gave him the whole story to hand on to me. But they're not in Delhi. No, no, they're not. Most of them are in Sarnath. And they've been there since before Angeli disappeared. Most? I thought you said all were. Uh, all the working unit and nearly all the players. Not Kamala. She doesn't appear in the Deer Park sequences. No women on the scenes for a while. I see. And I shook? <laughs> and then, dear, you don't ask an artist of that caliber to run around after you. You run after him. We show a shoke the rushes right here in Delhi. And he broods over them three or four times, and then he comes up with the music when he's good and ready. I suppose he must be in the film star class himself, then. <laughs> yeah, just about. I know what you're thinking. This tune you heard the guy singing. But you don't know he was the one who brought the note. And for goodness sake, some of the sweepers and drivers around the villas could have heard Ashok playing that theme and picked it up, even if you're right about it. Mm. In any case, Ashok's hardly in need of money. Hardly. Well, I suppose we ought to go upstairs. If you're right, we oughtn't to move away from that telephone. No, I guess you shouldn't. Hey, uh, do you mind if I hang around with you? Please. Well, I wish you would. I shouldn't have any peace if I left you to it. Nine o'clock, no word. Well, suppose we're backing the wrong horse. Suppose it isn't for money. This may be it. You take it. No, wait. Hold it till I open the door. Then give me a nod if it's him, and I'll slip down to the switchboard and see if it can be traced. Keep him talking, and don't miss a word he says. Hello? Uh, Dominic Fels here. You are the gentleman who has lost some valuables. I have them. They can be recovered. I know you hear me. You want your lost property back. 
I can provide it at a proper price. Uh, are you sure you're on the right number? This is Dominic Fels speaking. You want me? <laughs> no, it is you who want me, my friend. If you want Miss Kumar back. How do I know you really have any information about Miss Kumar? Who are you? How could I know she has gone, except that I have her? Is she... She is safe. Quite safe. You want proof? Huh? Miss Kumar has American passport number N830446. I am right, no? You see, you can have this young lady back for 200,000 rupees. Cash. But that's impossible. You must make it possible. If you want her, get that 200,000 rupees. Get it in mixed notes and put it in a cheap black school bag. And on Sunday... Sunday? That's only two days. Well, how on can we... Sunday afternoon at two o'clock, you and the woman also go to the Birla temple. Leave your shoes with the lame boy who sits at the foot of the steps on the right. Put with your shoes the case with the money. But, but, then go into the temple and stay there half an hour. Not one minute less. Do not try to keep watch on the back. Do not say one word to the police. Or you will never see that girl again. When you come out, put on your shoes and go back to the hotel. On Sunday evening, I will ring you again. And we will arrange about the child. But, but, but listen, we want to cooperate, but there's no time. You must give us longer... Sunday! Want her. My God. It's impossible. What does he want? 200,000 rupees by Sunday. Sunday? Oh, now we've got to tell Dorette. But I don't think we can get the money through by then. Whatever we do. We have to. There has to be a way. A coal box. Somewhere central. That's all we've time to get. Probably Connaught Circus. One step out of that box, he'd be a drop in the ocean. So what do you have to say? He wants 200,000 rupees by Sunday. What? How the hell We're can to we get... get 200,000 rupees in mixed notes, put it in a black school bag, and take it to the Birla Temple at two on Sunday afternoon. Then we leave the black bag with the lame boy outside with our shoes, go in and stay there half an hour. That's all. Oh, well, we'll have to tell Dorette Lester, ask her to cable the money. Sunday? The banks won't be open. I know, we've only got tomorrow. There's Vatsu, Dad. Well, he warned us. Not a word to any outsider. What about Mr. Felder? He knows. Oh, the kidnapper can't know that. But he won't miss it if you go near Vasilev. Anyway. Yes? It won't be necessary. It won't be necessary to frighten Dory either. You don't mean... No, no, I haven't got that kind of money. But the company has. The company? The film company. We've got a big credit here to cover the film. It can run to 200000 and my signature is enough to draw on it. Dory will replace the loan as soon as she hears. And we'll get Ansley back. Oh, Lord, if we could. But is, is it really all right for us to borrow it? Quite all right. Listen, if I left undone anything I could do for Ansley, I could never look Dory in the face again. I'll draw the money out tomorrow morning. You buy a cheap black school bag, just like he said, and we make the payment. Or rather, you make the payment. I'll stay out of sight. Well, you won't try anything, will you? We did agree to obey instructions. I won't try anything. But I'll have a shot at trailing whoever takes that briefcase. Oh, is that wise? <laughs> hey, you haven't seen the Birla Temple on Sundays. It's like a fun fair. Thousands of people. It might make it hard for me to trail him, but he certainly won't spot me. You go out in the morning and buy a cheap briefcase. Then meet me in the State Bank of India, Parliament Street, at half past ten. Well, that's done. Let's hope the company don't run short of dollars in the next few days. Put the envelope in the case now. Well... Or would you rather I locked it in the office safe till the time comes? I'd rather you kept it. Well, that sounds safer. Drop it off at the desk tomorrow. In the morning? Yes. That could be time enough. There'll be plenty of people going in and out. Well, if anyone's watching me now, he might knock this lot off before I get back to the hotel and then ask for more. As you like. I'll bring it to the desk about ten. Uh, be somewhere close, just in case. Of course. And when you leave the temple in the afternoon, come to Narula's for tea. I'll be there. We'll do that. Okay. You go ahead first... Uh, we better not leave together. I'll give you ten minutes before I go. Well, one thing, Felder won't be spotted. Not in this lot. 
I wonder where he is. I thought I saw him a moment ago over there on the opposite pavement. No sign of him now. Oh, he'll be on the move all the time, I expect. Otherwise, he might look suspicious. There's the lame boy. Do you think he's in it? God knows. Probably not. You look after our shoes for us? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And this briefcase? Yes, sir. Well, come on. This is going to be the longest half hour of my life. It is Felder. He's back again now, and he's seen us, I'm sure. If anyone touches that briefcase, he'll know. What went wrong? What the hell went wrong? I just couldn't believe it when we came out and the briefcase was still there. We did everything just the way he asked us to. We didn't tell anyone except you, Mr. Felder, and they can't have known about you. Played it the way we were told, and we're still no nearer getting Anjali back. Well, what on earth are we going to do now? They can't have spotted you, can they? Huh? Oh, oh I'm sorry, of course not. Oh, I don't think anyone noticed me, though. I did once wonder. I... Nah, I just don't believe it. Just a moment. We haven't opened it. Hmm? Opened it? Yeah, go ahead. Let's be sure. Open it. All right, but... Here's the envelope. Thanks. Nice. Untouched. What are you doing? Making sure... What? Old newspaper. Oh but how on earth? He must have been planted. He? Yeah, this countryman from somewhere in the hills. He asked me the way to bear the house, and I had to take my eye off the briefcase for a moment to show him, but, but they couldn't have done it in the time. It wouldn't take long. A fastener like this is a gift, but only if you had another packet ready to substitute. Yeah, the bank envelope would be easy enough to guess that after all. He must have been in on it, but God knows where he is now. Does it matter? Of course it matters. He's got away with... But the money's been collected. That's the important thing. They've got what they asked for. They promised us a call to arrange about Anjali. They'll let us have her back. Yeah. I hope to God they will. Quarter to ten. And the telephone hasn't rung once. There was always a possibility that they might be greedy. I'll go. It can't be... No, of course it can't. Swami, come in. Please come in. I trust you will forgive this late call. Oh, I'm afraid I have interrupted a private conference. Oh, that's all right. Uh, this is Mr. Felder, an old friend of Anjali's mother. He's directing a film here and has been very kind to us. And this is the Swami Prem Nathanand, an old friend of Mr. Kumar. Delighted. We can certainly use another friend. I uh, take it the Swami knows what's going on. I have that honor. Uh, please sit down, sir. Thank you. You have received no further news about Anjali's whereabouts? No, but we've had a telephone call. She's being held to ransom. I see. When was this? Friday night. <laughs> the devil of it is we've paid the ransom. Or rather, Mr. Felder has. Oh, not me, no. The film company. Might I ask how much? 200,000 rupees. This is a great deal of money. We were asked to leave it in a briefcase outside the Birla Temple with a lame boy who looks after the shoes. Then we were to stay inside half an hour. When we came out, the case was still there. But the envelope inside was full of old newspaper. The money had gone. If money has been demanded and taken, then clearly money is the means to further negotiations. This first sum was very easily come by, so there is a strong temptation to repeat the success. Do you not agree, Mr. Felder? Oh, I do. And I give whatever I could raise to get Anjali back. But I shot not only my own boat, but the company's too. If Dory stands by me, I'm all right. If she doesn't, I'm sunk. Huh. And all for nothing. You have done what you could. It is now for others, perhaps with greater responsibility. And it is for them, too, to appreciate that it's true worth the thing you have done. I have found such a man. What? Oh, on earth. Where was he? What's he been doing? Where he has been, I cannot tell you. Surely in many places. I found him at a place of the spirit where we have sometimes rested together. Is he coming? Yes, he is coming. There will be a plane from Madras tomorrow, arriving a little afternoon. 
Did he know his mother was dead? Not until it was too late. Then you had to tell him. It must have been very hard for you both. And his child... It is never easy to return to the world. Until you have left it, you cannot know how hard. But there is no other way forward and none back. Yes, I told him. And tomorrow afternoon he will be here. But what can I do? God knows I'll be glad to see him. But damn it all. We paid what they asked and they ratted on us. Now what more has he got to offer? About 12 million rupees more. Do not forget we are concerned with people who simply want money. Satyavan has a great deal. It sweats from his finger ends. Money. Daughters are infinitely harder to come by. He will pay. But how do we get in touch with them? Oh, as soon as they know her father's back, they'll get in touch with us. You may well be right. But Satyavan has not left it to chance. I have here the text of an advertisement for the personal column of all tomorrow's newspapers. Anjali, I'm interested in your merchandise. High price if delivered in good condition. Full guarantees. I had intended to give Mr. Kumar's home number, but if you would permit, I now think it would be better to say only call usual number, 8 p.m. Kumar. Hey, you think of everything. It is necessary to think of everything. And so? Yes? There is one possibility we cannot forget. Anjali may already have been killed. Good God, no. Surely they wouldn't hurt her. It is common practice in kidnapping cases. Such people make certain they can never be identified. That's impossible. I, 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 I'm sure she's alive and well. Let us hope so. But I must tell you, her father will insist on seeing with his own eyes that his daughter is unharmed before he enters into negotiations. What is more, he insists that you should also see her. He has not set eyes on her for six years. A substitute might be palmed off on him. Well, they'd never take the risk. Satyavan will agree to any safeguard they suggest. If they want their money, they will go to some trouble to arrange it. Now, I shall leave you until tomorrow evening. If you agree that I may bring Satyavan here. Oh, yes, please do. Good night, Miss Barber. Good night. Mr. Felder. Good night. A good night, Mr. Felder. Good night. That his car? The Rolls? Yes, yes, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> Wouldn't you know he'd have that sort of car? I bet everything he does and everything that belongs to him measures up. You know, say what you like about this country, at least it's got style. Hey. My God, no. What is it? It can't be. What's the matter? That fellow by the rolls. That's Girish. He's the Swami's driver. What about him? He's the guy who stopped me outside the temple this afternoon and asked the way to Birla House. Girish? Well, he, he drove us home from the mission. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'd know that face anywhere. Now, you tell me why a man who can drive his boss all over Delhi should have to ask the way to Birla House. Go ahead. Tell me. I'm listening. Well, Mr. Kumar, I expect to know the score about all of us from the Swami here. I'd like you to know. We'll do everything we can to help you get your little girl back. I understand you have already done much. I am very grateful. We must set that account straight as soon as possible, but forgive me if I can think only of one thing just now. Of course. Uh, if the call does come, should I answer? At first, I mean. Yes, the number is your number. And it may be some quite innocent... God. They're early. Hello? Dominic Fels here? Ah, good. I was afraid you might all be out. Uh, this is Ashok Kabir. I'm down in the foyer. May I come up? I brought a little present for Anjali. Um, I wondered why we hadn't heard from you. Have you been out of Delhi? Oh, yes. Uh, ever since the unit left for Banaras. I had three concerts. I'm only just back. Uh, Anjali... W wait a moment. I'll come down. It's Ashok. He's just back from a concert tour. He doesn't know. He's brought a present for Anjali. What shall I do? Tell him the truth and bring him up? Then... No. We are five already. Let in one more and the kidnappers might take fright. Oh, I'm sure we can trust Ashok. And I am sure you are right. But that is not the point. He is right. We are already too many. Then what do I tell him? Tell him that Anjali is not here this evening. Invite him to come for coffee tomorrow evening after dinner. With you 
and Miss Barber and Anjali. An act of faith. An act of faith. All right. That's what I'll tell him. Dominic Fells here. I am calling in answer to the advertisement. Mr. Kumar. Oh, thank you. I am Kumar. Listen to me. I have some merchandise. I know, and I am prepared to pay for it. But there will be no deal until I have seen for myself that my daughter still lives. But this is the... You have my word. I have taken no steps to trace you. And I will not do so if you give her back. You will show my daughter to me and to these friends of mine who have seen her more recently than I have. Or you will get nothing. It is not possible. I tell you, she is safe. You hold just one saleable article, my friend. And I am offering to buy it. The price will be high. If you do not want to deal on my terms, where will you find another buyer? If I try to do this, you will pay. I have said so. First, let us see her. Then call me here. If you make it possible, the exchange can take place tomorrow. Very well. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, all five of you... Five? I know there are five. You will all meet for lunch at Sawyer's in Connaught Circus. A window table will be booked in the name of Kumar. There is a sweet shop just opposite. You know it? Yes. Yes, I know it. At a quarter past twelve, Anjali will be brought to the shop by taxi. Then she will go also by taxi. If any of the five attempt to leave the restaurant and follow her, no one will see her again. We will not follow. On behalf of all of us here, I agree. Tomorrow at a quarter past twelve. cross with you? He will beat me. My mother, she, she cannot stop him. All right, I'll try to eat it. Four days. I've been here four days. Shantila, where is this place? I'm not understand. Yes, you do. You do understand, but you're frightened to tell me. Oh, I shouldn't have asked you. What does he want, Shantila? Uh, money? It, it must be money. My father were back. He'd pay anything. I know he would. But I, I'm not sure about mommy. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. My necklace. Oh, it's from Scotland. The stones are from Scotland. Mommy bought it for me. The colors are kind of pretty, aren't they? So smooth mm. and round and shiny. They're just pebbles, really, though. They're not worth much. Oh, I guess you don't understand. Not all understand some. We must be the same age, I suppose. He's cruel to you, isn't he? To me? To my mother? I know. You both have to do what he tells you, and... You've both been kind to me. You like my necklace. It's beautiful. Turn around. Let me put it on for you. What? No, 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 they're yours. I want to give them to you. I have others. Oh, I... I had others. Come, Anjali. You are going shopping with Shopping? Us. Uh, leaving this place? For just a little. We are taking you to buy some sweets. You like that, won't you? We are going for a ride in a taxi. You will be very quiet and sensible, won't you, Anjali? Uh, for your father's sake. Uh, remember that, huh? Yes. Yes, that's Anjali. They've dressed her in Indian clothes, so she looks like any Delhi schoolgirl, but... It's Anjali. You are quite sure? It is so long since I saw her. Quite sure. I've gone in the shop. Yeah, it was Anjali, all right. Now, for God's sake, what do we do? What we promised. We'll remain here making no move to alarm her captors. 
You agree they have kept their part of the bargain? But, damn it, she's there right under our eyes. Only an old man and a woman with her. If we went straight down and into the shop... We cannot we... take such a risk. We were warned. If we disobeyed, we might never see her again. Uh, I suppose you're right. They're coming out. And we just watched them take her away? We can't. We can't. We have to. The next move is up to them. Eat your sweets, Anjali. Why did you bring me here? What are you going to do with me? We brought you to buy sweets. A little treat. Now we are taking you home. Be quiet. It was for someone to see me, wasn't it? Who was it? I know where we are. We're in Connaught Circus. Stop looking out of the window. Help! Kidnapping! But, Help! Why can't you hold Stop. on? Stop it, boys! This is... Drive on! Drive on quickly, you fool. She is mad. You see, she is ill. Mad. Don't listen to her. Be silent, woman. Silent. Look after that accursed girl. Faster, faster. There is a motorcycle rickshaw following us. You must lose him. You must. I promise you double fare if you get back quickly. Help! Help! Quiet! Faster! Faster, Daria! Faster! This bullock cart, quickly pass it. It will block the way for him. Yes! Now! Good, good. We have lost him. Do not go to the back. Drop us here at the front. There is no time. Come, quick, take her arm. Stop weeping. Woman, hold the girl. Here you are. Uh, double fare. Now, indoors quickly. We have lost him, the man who was following us. But I know where we are. In here. Ah. Get her back to her room quickly, quickly. I won't. You will do as I say. No. Come here. No, I won't. Let me go. Get this. Get me. No. Sorry for that. What have you done with Arjun Baba? Shut your mouth! Shut your mouth! And get back inside! Inside! Shantilara, quickly. Quickly, you must go. Where is he? My uncle is very angry. He's beating my mother. <gasps> He's afraid now you've seen him. You can't tell about him. He wants to kill you so that you cannot tell. Yes, of course. They, they told him, keep you safe, not hurt you. But now he's afraid. Now come. Close, close to the wall. Here is the front door. They will lock it after us. Quick, this way. He's found out. You break the door down. Hurry! Why, why did you, why did you come in here, the gentleman Darfak? Look for us in the road. Oh, there are lots of places to hide here, too. The great observatories and the staircases. And... I think, I think we're safe. Well, he saw us come in here. I, I don't think so. Oh, I must rest. He's so quiet. No, he's not here. But come on a little further, and then oh. if he does come in the park, he won't see us. I will try. The left hand path to the trees and the great staircase. Oh, there's come. Oh, oh, I see her. We must go up the staircase. Now, quickly, quickly. No good. Oh, come, master, master, come. I, I can't go further, but he's behind us. He's climbing the stairs. No. So it's no good. Oh, when we get to the top, there's nowhere else to go. And he, he knows, he knows where he is. Stand away. He means to kill me. And there's no 
railing, not up here. Chantilla, leave her! Leave that girl! Chantilla, what are you doing? The necklace. I... I break it. On them he must fall. And there is no handrail. Angeli? Angeli? Be careful. The beads on the stairs. I see them. It's all right. Who are you? I know. Namaste. Namaste, my daughter. I've come to take you home. We have kept our promise, Mr. Kabir. Mr. Fels is here to meet you and Miss Barber and Ranjali. You must forgive our friend here. It was at my suggestion we did not tell you the truth yesterday. Oh, no apology is needed. When this thing happened, all of us who knew Anjali was suspect. And Mr. Fels heard and recognized my music, Kamala's lullaby. Yes, my lullaby. I should not be here. I was not invited. But I wanted to celebrate too. It is nice to be with my husband again. Your husband? Mr. Kumar, you, you're married to Anjali's father? Oh, no. My husband is Kishan Malenka, a very good character actor indeed. The Swami tells me he gave a very convincing performance as Anjali's father, a most impressive tycoon. But if he's not Kumar, who is? Anjali, I think you know. This is my father. Girish, but the Swami's driver. When we were in the taxi going away from the sweet shop, I saw him driving after us. I knew him at once. I knew he would come for me. I lost you, and then found you again almost too late. But why? Why the pretense? We too did not know who could be trusted. At the time of Mrs. Kumar's death, I did not know where Satyavan was. He learned of it too late to be present at her funeral rites, but directly he knew, he returned to Delhi and came to me. We drove together to his house. So? You know what we found? Should I have named him to people who, for all we knew, might be involved in his daughter's abduction? He wished to remain in the background unknown and free to move as he would. From that moment, we watched you all. But why did you get someone to impersonate him? Because things had gone wrong. Money had been paid and Anjali had not been returned. My good friend Malenka had a very specific job. To insist that we saw Anjali alive before more money was paid. She might, for all we knew, have been killed already. But... Yes, a... Mr. Felder. You were horrified at that suggestion, I know. But it is common form in these cases. But once we had been assured that we would see her, we made plans. Satyavan, apparently a servant, was free to observe and act. On his behalf, no one made any bargains. Those were our reasons. Was it well done? Very well done. And that was why I could not let Mr. Kabir come up here last night. He knew Malenka very well. He would have given the show away on the spot. To... to which one of us? Ah, I did not then know of Govindas. It might have been anyone. It seems now it was all carried out by one man. Except... Yes? Well, if he did it all alone... Why did Chantilla say that they told him not to hurt me? And if he did it all alone, it came up very quickly with that idea of the sweet shop. Now, supposing he'd already been primed by someone... And what did he do with the money we left at the Bela Temple? They haven't found it anywhere. Yeah. I'll have to justify that to Dory. But at least she still has a daughter. I don't suppose we'll ever see that money again. Come in. Ladies, Swami, gentlemen, forgive this intrusion... There is a small police matter of identification you can help me with, if you will, please. Hey. The money! Please do not touch it. Fingerprints. I must ask you if you can identify this package. It looks very like the money Mr. Felder drew in my presence last Saturday. Where did you find it? In your room, Mr. Felder. What? I... But I... 
Look, th- th- this is a plant. I, 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 I drew the money. Yes, sir. I handled the parcel. But, but, but we paid that money as we were told at the temple. There was a parcel of sliced up newspaper left in the stand. And if you think I made the switch, you can think again. I never went near the place where the briefcase was. Hey, hey, did I, Kumar? You were there? That is true. I was watching him. Yeah, and for about two minutes, when you asked me the way, I wasn't watching. The exchange could have been made then. You weren't watching, and neither was I. But I was. Swami, Satyavan spoke to you, Mr. Felder, because he believed you'd noticed him and suspected his interest in you. We were, you see, following the young people everywhere. But all that time, I was sitting in meditation on the steps of the temple. It is perfectly true, Mr. Felder, that you did not go near the briefcase during that time. But neither did anyone else. Then how did... Therefore, it was when placed exactly as when removed. That envelope held only newsprint. The ransom had been collected in advance. Well, you... you, Even film directors, Mr. Felder, do not always make enough money for their needs. And sometimes cannot resist temptation when it walks across their path. It is a question of the moderation of one's needs. And your needs were clearly immoderate. Therefore, when you attempted to retain Anjali in the hope of further gain, we placed before you the bait of a second and greater ransom to discover if she was safe and to ensure you would keep her so. What would you take me for? I wouldn't have hurt a hair of her head. I I may have needed money, but but Dory's girl wasn't expendable. No, no. The half-American child, your friend's child, was not expendable. You told your accomplice to keep her safe. But did you tell him no violence to anyone? No. You shut your ears and left it to him. A wisp of Indian dust. An old beggar, hardly a man at all to you. Arjun Baba was expendable. Uh, I I didn't know. I, I tell you, I, I didn't know. You will come with me, please, Mr. I, Felder. I, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I, I'm sorry. What will happen to him? They cannot charge him with the murder of Arjun Baba. Probably the only charge will be misappropriation of that company money. And um, what will happen to Shantila? She saved your life. She is your sister, and therefore my child. She shall always be with you if you want it so. Yes, please, I do. Oh, and we ought to buy her another necklace. (laughs) That is very true. Remind me. Mm. It is late. I shall take her away with me. It's after midnight. At this same hour, I think, I got up in Rabindranagar a year ago and found, like the Lord Buddha that the gods had filled the universe with the thought that it was time to go forth. Where? That is of secondary importance. What matters is to leave what has always been and to look for what has never been yet. I had had riches and marriage and a child, and I had nothing. The only answer is to abandon that nothing and go in search of a different kind of treasure a different kind of salvation. Perhaps not salvation at all, only the loss of oneself. Come. Would you like me to drive you? Good night. Ashok, can we give you a lift? Oh, thank you. Mr. Phelps, I'll send you a recording of the music. Ah. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. The morning raga to be played in the early hours of the morning when the guests are departing. In The Morning Raga, the novel by Ellis Peters, adapted for radio by Betty Davis, the cast was as follows. Dominic, Sean Barrett. Tossa, Patricia Gallimore. Anjali, Elizabeth Proud. 
Felder, Harry Taub, the Swami, Carlton Hobbs, Dorette, Maddie Head, Ashok, David Spencer, Govind Das, Saeed Jaffrey, Kishan Singh, Tariq Yunus, Kamala, Heather Emanuel, Vasu Dave, Garrett Green, Girish, Sam Duster, Police Officer, Renu Setna, Malenka, Roger Snowden, Shantila, Joe Manning Wilson. Other parts played by Roger Snowden, Mohan Singh, Tarek Yunus and Joe Manning Wilson. The sitar was played by Viram Jasani. The play was produced by Betty Davis.